Hello, good evening, and welcome to our Vampire the Masquerade Chronicle, L.A. by Night. Thank you, family, for joining us in this, our fifth season. And tonight, we bring you Season 5, Episode 8, Rain in Hell. Normally, at this point in our story, I would ask our vampires to introduce themselves to you. But tonight, we have so many vampires attempting to reign in hell, and other creatures besides, who will be appearing at dramatically appropriate moments, that we'll put that on hold for tonight. The Anarchs in the World of Darkness have a weapon that the elder vampires of any sect or faction do not have, and that is passion. All but the most cynical opportunistic Anarch believes in the cause or some aspect of it to some degree. In some cases, the belief can be chalked up to youth or lack of worldliness, but for most of those who spend more than a few years with the Anarchs, the struggle itself hones their belief in it. Now, Anarchs are almost never dealt a fair deal in kindred society. So, why would anyone ever choose to be an Anarch? Well, because they believe in the ideal, because they must. To the Anarchs, the undead social order simply doesn't work. This is the whole reason for the revolt and for the movement itself. The selfish el elders have hoarded for themselves that which should be shared equally, or at least the opportunity, among all the undead. That's what the Anarchs believe. And they want to change it. They want it, the change in the form of removing privilege from those who have clutched it to themselves for so long, or in the form of pushing back against those who would impose their will on others unfairly. The diversity of opinions on how to achieve those goals is what gives the Anarchs that passionate strength. But they are still vampires. They are idealists and individualists torn between the hope of a better world and the unquenchable hunger that can taint that world and everything they touch. With this firmly in mind, let's tell a vampire story. Late at night, east of Los Angeles, in San Fernando Mission, two Anarchs, two vampires, are attempting to leave. So far, they have managed to 
defeat the guards at their door, make their way into a courtyard within this complex that they know little about, and convince one of the coalition of vampire hunters, Elijah, to escort them out into the world beyond. And here, in this courtyard, with Elijah, with soldiers nearby holding their fire, is where we return to our story. You're absolutely sure you want to leave? It would be best, yes. All right, Annabelle. Thank I you. I want to do what's best for you. It's I wish you'd let me help you. I wish you'd stay, but... You're not helping anybody. I'll take you out. Should we go now? Yes. We should probably dismiss the soldiers. Oh, um, uh, I've got this, everyone. Uh, you can stand down. Um, yeah. The and give us your guns. Most of the soldiers don't react to X's command. You do hear one chuckle softly. I don't think they'll do that. But the soldiers do, reluctantly, very reluctantly and slowly, lower their weapons and begin to move away. Some of them step back into the doorways through which they came. Several others turn and walk down the cloisters at the side of the courtyard. Some of them don't go very far, keeping you in sight. All right? Let's go. Let's go. Elijah leads you across the courtyard, past the plants, the flowers, palm trees, to a doorway on the opposite side, one of many here that line the courtyard. Is it old or new? It's an older doorway. I'll reach out and I'll touch it. You feel smooth wood polished with the weight of age under yeah. your fingertips. Use spirit's touch, and I've had, I fail the rouse check. Where does that put your hunger Three. now? But who's counting? X. Why are you dilly dallying? Why haven't you eaten him yet? You were impressing me. You were improving, and now we are right back where we started from. I'm not here to impress you, okay? I want you to leave. I've always wanted you to leave. Well, I think we both know that's not going to happen. Just leave me alone! I'm sorry. Mastering yourself, you reach out. The spirits touch. Please make an intelligence and auspects roll. Let's see if you can sense the emotional residue left by those who have handled the object or visited this location in the past. Ooh, two, three, four, uh, five, five and successes. Six, 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 six critical. successes. Critical success, mm -hmm. but not a messy critical. Not a messy critical. I got seven. Oh yeah. yeah. This one and this one. Seven successes total. You rush your fingertips along the aged wood, feeling its smooth surface worn by time and the touch of many, many other hands. And the memories flit past you like a kaleidoscope, too quickly to capture any image distinctly, easily. And then the kaleidoscope slows the images come slower and slower and slower the further back in time you go until you behold an old man with a wizened, kindly face and a fringe of white hair around his forehead. The top of his head is shaved in a tonsure and he wears a simple brown robe tied at the waist with a piece of rope. 
and he is intoning a prayer in Spanish. This is all occurring in the distant past, perhaps even as far in the past as when the structure was built. You've gone a little too far back, perhaps, for your intention. Next, we good? This place is old and has a lot of blessings. Blessings? I don't know if this stuff affects us or not, but it's old, like magic old. Where are we, Father? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what. Oh, um, just Elijah will do. Uh, right. I'm I'm not ordained. We wow. are in um, we're in the mission of San Fernando, um, in the Alhambra neighborhood of your city. Hmm. This was built m many years ago in the 18th century, I think. We have um, repurposed it for our uses, at least temporarily. Have so you repurposed an emergency exit? Because we we're just leaving. Allow me to open the door for you. Thank you. From his pocket, he removes a ring of keys. It seems to be an ordinary ring of keys. There are many. They make a little jingling noise as he handles them. He selects one, places it in the lock, turns the lock. You hear the bolt open. He opens the door. And you see beyond what looks like a small chapel with another doorway on the other side. There is a stone altar, wooden cross hanging from the stone wall, high windows narrow on the wall. If it were daylight, of course, the sun would be shining in on the cross and the altar. But at this time of day, it's lit only by some feeble electric light. He enters the chapel and begins to walk toward the opposite door. Are you sure you got him? He, he didn't use the helmet thing and... He didn't have a helmet on. Or maybe he's got a newer model, like AirPods. <sighs> Can you tell? I couldn't get him. It is at this moment that the opposite door opens and a familiar figure enters. Adrian, I was showing them out at Annabelle's request. Adam. Elijah, I understand. Um, I would like you to go see Sister Dorothy if you can. You're, uh, just to make sure that there's no lasting residue from anything that was attempted on you, my friend. Uh, tell the soldiers to remain at the ready outside. Annabelle, I'm just going to go take care of that for him, and then I'll be back. No. You're staying right here. We're all yeah. having a little discussion together. Uh, um, I mean, I, I really have to. I, I'm, I, I think we're going to be good friends, but I really have to do that. I mean, he, is my, he is my supervisor, my superior, my, my boss in a way. Can't, you can excuse me for a couple of minutes. I said stay. Annabelle. You do not wield ultimate authority in this place. Elijah, see to it. Oh, so you wield the authority? Hardly. You need but look around to see who's... He means God. God. He means God, X. Cool. cool. It's... Good. Bad. That's... We don't like that. Can we leave? I'll, I'll take you out like I promised, but I'm going to go do this. And with an expression of some reluctance, Elijah does turn away from you, Annabelle, and exits out the door through which he led you. When you've submitted to the highest possible will, there is no room left for weaker wills to dominate. X, Annabelle, thank you for coming. I see that you grew tired of your holding cell. Let's have a discussion about what comes next. 
You, you lied to me, or your people did. They said they were gonna, they said they were gonna cure the voices in my head, but I would be fine. And then you throw me into a cell with her as if it's some sort of what, therapy? Or was I supposed to kill her? What did you think was gonna happen? Both of you are lost. And when lost, it's helpful to find people that are looking for the same way out. I can't make you choose salvation, but it is open to you as it is open to all of God's creatures. Have you heard about the missionary paradox, Adrian? Feel free to share. People who have not heard the good word of God live a good life, go to heaven, having never been saved or converted. And yet, you send out missionaries to tell people about God. Once again, you and your people are not about saving souls. You're not about the end result. You're about exerting control, your control. And I won't let you have Los Angeles. Are you interested in paradoxes, Annabelle? Paradises? Paradoxes? I don't know the plural. Paradoxes. Plural for paradox. But I understand the confusion. Also, your shirt takes on a more ironic meaning when worn by one of your kind. It's hers. First of all, to your point about theology and doctrine, the conviction that a virtuous pagan can see paradise is not shared by all members of the clergy. Number two, I would say this. If you're concerned with paradoxes, consider the paradox of what it means to oppose institutions and to organize resistance to them. What do you create the moment you begin to organize? A system. I would say, if any of us are trapped in a paradox, Annabelle, it would be you. I once told Victor Temple that perhaps we deserve to be hunted because we have to do cruel and unspeakable things as the price of our immortality. So in that way, we are very much alike, Adrian except that your people, with all your free will and without this beast inside of you that we have, you choose to join that institution that has historically oppressed people in your search for what you believe to be a better world. And my people, most of us didn't ask to be what we are. We're just trying to survive night to night. Then walk into the sunrise. It's not that easy. It is if you believe. Believe in what? That, that Believe that this world is not the point, X. You are scared. Before I walked out of that door, I heard you both trembling. Did you see it on the door? Are you sure you got him? Are you sure that the effect worked? An immortality of fear this profound? Do you intend to quake and shiver for countless nights? You are already in perdition, my friends. This is an unspeakable existence. I'll show you what fear looks like, and I'll cast Dementation, and I pass my Rouse check. You succeed in the Rouse check, grow no hungrier. That's manipulation and dominate. So the resistance is composure and intelligence. That's eight dice for you. Looking for onks and starred onks. Six. Three. I would like to spend a willpower, please. Spend a willpower, take a superficial willpower damage, mm -hmm. and you can reroll up to three of the failed dice, but not the hunger die. Not the hunger die. But not the hunger die. 
Three. Mm. Uh, so, Adrian, you feel the attack. You feel the unwelcome and unasked for power that X attempts to use on you. And for a moment, f- just for a moment, you feel your thoughts sliding sideways and then vertically and around and then in the other direction. It's disorienting. It's disturbing and perhaps even a little scary. But your will is strong and you are yourself and your own person. I'd like to show you what fear looks like. Uh, and I would like to abjure this creature. No! Um, I'm up in front of X. You were going to move to transpose yourself Cat's between grace. Adrian and X with Cat's Grace. Adrian should roll seven dice. Um, I'm going to hold up my crucifix. I'm going to ward off, I suppose, both of these. Um, mm-hmm. X and Annabelle, each of you please make a pool of your unspent willpower. No hunger dice. Does unswayable mind or fortitude play a part in this? Yes. Unswayable mind. I should get that. <laughs> <laughs> add your four. Add this. Add dice equal to your fortitude to your pool, Annabelle. Three successes. Three successes. Three. Also three. And messy if failure. Let's find out if it was a failure or not. Three. A tie. Hmm. These powers don't work quite the same way as vampiric disciplines and tests. So, of course, multiple things happen at once. Power. Righteous power, the power of faith and conviction, thrums up and down your arm as you hold forth the symbol of your faith. The light shining from it seems to come out of the very air itself. X, you are forced backward several paces until your shoulders connect with the stone wall of the chapel behind you. You're not sure if you can approach Adrian or not. If you want to, you'll have to try. But Annabelle, best she'll fail you. Mm. The compulsion of your blood is rebellion. The death right of the Bruja is to resist and to be angry. You will be at a penalty to resist all forms of frenzy for the rest of the scene and suffer a two-die penalty on any role that isn't related to righting this injustice. And this is an excellent place to pause this chapter of our vampire story for now and take a look at what is occurring just outside the San Fernando Mission Compound as other creatures of the night make their arrival. Atop a low hill set back from the street behind a screen of palm trees. If we were to look at the scene from a height, we would see a rectangular compound roughly the size of a football field, surrounded on old sides by old, low, but very solid stone buildings with red clay tile roofs connected to one another as if for defense. Within a maze-like jumble of smaller buildings 
of various ages. Concrete paths winding through courtyards and gardens, all minimally lit for an aesthetically pleasing effect. There's a tall stone church for the sacraments and ceremonies, and a cemetery for the burial of the faithful. There's even a gift shop here at the San Fernando Mission. It's here at this historic landmark site that a large sign tells us is closed for renovations, that a discreet black SUV pulls up, filled with monsters. Now, before we begin the main event, let's talk about how we got here. Each of you has had time since we last visited you, to make certain preparations for this activity, this project. So I would like to ask you how you have prepared. Some of you have contacted allies or tried to contact allies. Some of you may have retrieved items that you've had hidden away for this purpose. Remember that your ordinary cell phones courtesy of the Inquisition, no longer work and that you are using burner phones. I'm going to take it as read that you have exchanged numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've left the weird sisters, Coterie and Zelios, with a burner phone in the labyrinth mm -hmm. to do what they know needs to be done at your signal. Let's begin with you, Victor. How have you prepared for this? Two things. The signal that we've given to them is we will attempt to call or text if possible. If not, if Hester feels a pull on her soul mm -hmm. towards me, that means do it. I think you're referring to the power of presence and the summons. I am. If she feels compelled to look for me, it doesn't mean look for me, it means pull the trigger on the ley lines. I understand. The second thing, uh, knowing that this night was almost inevitable, uh, the Baron has stashed a couple of vehicles around the city in go bags, mm -hmm. so in the vicinity of Hollywood, I would have had an SUV with absolutely a bag of uh, a simple go bag, a couple pistols, you know, binoculars, that type of thing, um, just so that we're not completely flat-footed and we'll have a way around. So I, I would have asked Gary to have one of his people either bring it around or take me to it. Very reasonable, considering how often Victor has spoken aloud about this very possibility. Yes. Anything else I should know about? That this is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Light work. Ebe, what preparations have you chosen to make? Ebe, being the sheriff, would always have her go bag. Always. Wouldn't quite have her sniper rifle in it, but there's a couple nine millimeters, there's a combat knife, uh, binoculars, and she's got a ballistic jacket. So, she has nearly her normal complement of toys. Any messages that she attempts to send or have sent, courtesy of Gary and his Nosferatu brood? Is no. there anyone even left for Eve to contact? I don't think she would. Nothing. Very well. Nellie. Let's remind ourselves. Just a few hours ago, mm. you visited the clandestine medical facility where you expected to find your ghoul, yep. Greg. Mm -hmm. Greg Demetrios. You found the other one, Chelsea, still wounded, still in critical condition after that altercation with the Inquisition the previous night. But Greg's bed was empty. And the medical staff told you that despite his wounds, pumped full of painkillers, he had left and said he'd be back. Let's have that conversation now with Greg. He returned to the medical facility while you were waiting. Mm. Impatiently, I take it? Yes, of course. Mm. 
Is Eeb still with you at that time? I believe so. Greg returns. He's bandaged, he's cut, he's bruised, he's moving slowly. But he has a very pleased smile on his face until he sees you. Ah, shit. Give me one reason that I'm not gonna kill you right now. Ah, uh, well, you know, Nelly. Nice time to go out for takeout, asshole. Hey. Hungry, Eeb? Fuck you. Fuck you too. Listen. I got, what do you kids call it? The tea? The blood? I don't what? know, I'm not a kid. Spit it out. <sighs> give me a minute, give me a minute. Can I sit? This really hurts. I don't know, maybe if you were laying in the fucking bed, it wouldn't be hurting. Fair point, fair point. Look, I got a call from a guy, you know. I sorta mentioned him before, but you didn't want to know the details, so I didn't give him to you. My old boss, yeah, that guy, he called. Why? He wanted to talk to you. Me? So, as I understand it, there's this chucklehead named Adrian running amok who's running the show that you guys are up against. And uh, came into town, decided the whole thing was a shit show and took over. <laughs> oh, God, that hurts. Fired my old boss. I mean, the guy had it coming, but whatever. Boss is getting even. Really? So, <clears throat> he sent me with an offer. Ah, oh, fuck. Annabelle is being held in some mission, San Fernando. You knew that already. Yeah. Damn it. Okay, I got, I got, I can do better. I got more, I got more. Don't look at me like that. This group we're fighting, some of my old guys, the feds, mm -hmm. and the church, you knew that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, St. Leopold, Order of St. Leopold, whatever that, whatever the hell that is. They call themselves the Cynical. Anyway, these guys, the Cynical, they've pretty much blown through their role. They spent most of their resources hitting us. The raid, last night and yesterday. Mm. Anybody they caught, any of the blank, any of you they caught, already out of here, no longer in Los Angeles, except for Annabelle. I don't know what he wants with her, but he's defying orders to keep her. So he's in Dutch and he's running out of time. He ain't got all his people. Some of them are off, I don't know, they're at the, half of them are at your place and half of them are at Hollywood and Highland. <coughs> I don't know why, but the rest of them, whatever he's got left, it's, it's this mission. And whatever he's got to do, he's got to do it fast because they got to get out of here. So <clears throat> whatever you're going to do, and I can see you're doing something, you got to do it soon. Working on it. Yep. How weak do you feel right now? Do you think you can actually make a track <laughs> over to Hollywood and Highland? <laughs> and, and do what? Surveillance. <laughs> Seems like you were pretty good at it a long time ago with Seriously? other people. I mean, how about you give me something to tide me over? Sure. Yeah. Really? Oh, God. Fine. Next time I'll let you know. You are watch this. cutting the tip of your finger. Yep. And holding it out to Greg. His resolve doesn't last long. He steps in close, lowers his eyes, touches his lips to your fingertips, and with a beatific sigh, he drinks. Beats a cold one. Okay, we good? Are we? Oh, no, I'm not doing that with you. 
No, I didn't offer. <sighs> okay, that's... No. Oh. Awkward. Yeah. Okay. Great. Can you yeah, handle it? Yeah, yeah, I can got it now. I got it now. Got some more business to take care of with Lavender, so if you'd please excuse us. Yeah? Thank you. What happens with Lavender, Nellie? Um, I want to really make sure that she is as okay as she can be in the state that she is. First off, is she awake? Hmm. Well, you're no physician. You don't have medical training. Staff here at this, whatever this place is, assures you that they've done all they can for her and that she is stable, but she is definitely not out of the woods. Eventually, she's going to need care mm -hmm. in a proper hospital if she makes it. Just... But they figure another 24 hours, 48 hours will tell the tale. I'm just gonna hold her hand for a second. It's warm. She doesn't know you're there, unfortunately. The gunshot wounds caused too much damage. She's out of it. You can't do this without asking her. It's not right. Don't look at me like that. I have to try to save her. She wouldn't have a choice, though. Would you want me to leave you dead? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I thought, I thought this would be better. I don't know anymore. I'm gonna move her hair out of her face and make her, um, her locks just kind of in a nice pattern around her face. Frame them around her face? I don't know, Nellie. I don't know. Help me, please. I know you care about her. I know you do. I can't, can't hear her like this. Please. I. I don't know her like you know her. I can't tell you what's right for you and her. I just, but you, you asked know. me, you asked me how I felt about this. But you know this life. <laughs> what if there's... <sighs> okay. I know. She's gonna be okay. I hope. I don't know. I don't know, Nellie. I don't know. While you are considering your options, Jasper. Yeah. How'd you prepare? One, I would like to heal all the superficial damage that is on me from the previous night. How many do you need to clear your make, health need boxes? to make three routes checks. Make them now. I get one hungrier. Yeah. That's what I like to see. <laughs> yeah. That's what I like to feel. A little, you know, frizzing of excitement there. Yeah. We going hunting? Nope. Oh, come on. You're gonna have to wait. You suck. I know. I will then eat any rats in the vicinity to fill back up and slake my hunger. I will need to eat, uh, I think three. Well, you know the kind of larder that Gary Golden keeps here in the subterranean chambers below Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Yeah. So I do that. Very easy to raid the larder and ease your hunger on the disgusting entrees. But you okay. clear your health boxes yeah. and make your hunger manageable. Any other preparation? Do, 
did I ever get anything glove-related from Gary Golden? You asked Gary to find you something that you could wear to protect you from the power in the Inquisitor's weapon that you stole yeah. on the field of battle. I think you asked him for a metal gauntlet. I did. Just an idea. He couldn't find one. Mm. He's got a hockey goalie's mitt, though. <laughs> that works. Great. It's a little bulky. It's fine. Is it left or right-handed? Oh, he's got one for each. I'll take it left. They're not a match set. Mm, yeah, left. Mm. And then... Testing it quickly, you find that, yeah, you can pick this thing up. Great. When your skin doesn't touch the metal. Perfect. The last thing, I'd like to see if there's anything available in anybody's stashes that are not being used that would protect me from the occasional stray bullet. Hmm. That's up to everybody else. And the Eve is the only one of you that I'm aware of who keeps a Kevlar vest handy. And if she only has one, then I will go without. Gary might be able to fit you up with some kind of, well, he had the soup terrine, but I don't, <laughs> not sure. No, it's fine. Okay, I've done it before, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Do you have your knife? I do, and I have my nine millimeter pistol that I never use. Uh, other than that, I would just like to have a moment to talk to Eva really quick. Why don't you have that conversation, and then when you're concluded, Eva, let us know how you've prepared. Same. And we'll take a look back in the medical facility. Look, um... I know I'm... I was mad at you. Not because I'm actually mad at you, I'm just... I'm, it scared me. And I didn't like it. And regardless, we're gonna go in here and it's probably gonna go very badly. And I don't wanna be mad at you while I do it. Me neither. Like I said, I've been so confused and I honestly don't know what of my memories are my own or put in there by that man. Right, um... But you are the only thing I am sure of. So I will follow your lead. Okay. Don't, um... Don't do any... Un unless we're seen, don't electrocute anybody. I... Just, I'm sorry to be blunt about it, but just don't. I won't. Okay. I won't. It's but if I see you getting hurt, it will be hard to hold back. Yeah, but I want you to do it unless you uh, don't have a choice. I don't want... I can take that. I saw you get shot the other night. It comes with experience. <clears throat> yes, I'd rather not get shot again. Yeah, me too. You come first for me. All right. Yeah, I know. Let's uh, try not to die, huh? Deal. <sighs> so I still have. A splinter of wood held beneath my tongue mm. for the last few nights. A handy trick. It is deflection of wooden doom that I cast several nights ago before meeting with the Camarilla. Well, the ritual remains in effect until it is either used or you remove the piece of wood. Mm -hmm. Additionally, for anyone willing to give me their blood, I would like to attempt to do some firewalker rituals with Jasper being the first priority. I'll give my blood. Then myself, 
and then whoever is willing. Victor gave it at the time. <laughs> but I have to see how hungry I get one at a time. Eat well once we meet up. Same. So everyone, we'll see what happens. I don't know how many rats are on hand. <laughs> I dare say that Gary Golden keeps a generous table. I don't think that you'll want for quantity. Okay. Let's be clear about what the ritual does, however. Essentially, yes. anyone who receives the benefit of the ritual cuts the incoming damage from fire, all types of fire, in half. Whether it works on whatever else these enemies can do remains to be seen. And at some point, uh, Victor would like to ask Gary something before we depart. All right. Eva, are you finished with your preparations or do you need to make the rolls for the ritual? I need to make the rolls for the ritual. Let's carry that out first. Yes. A little bit of housekeeping since the results are rather important. The only thing I might run out of are fingertips as I need to cut off a fingertip for each. For each and every recipient of the ritual. That's correct. Disgusting. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, the first one fails. Jasper but, was your first priority, so I assume. But I will continue to attempt it on Jasper. Well, you can continue to attempt it until you run out of time or until you run out of rats, whichever comes first. All right. Your fingers. This is a success. Second time. Second time on Jasper? Okay. Third time. Who is next? Myself. It's one fingertip for ritual, right? Yes. I'm now down to eight. <laughs> Success. Anyone else? Now, since the ladies are away, I assume Victor would be first. If convenient. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. <clears throat> I imagine we test by I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm mm. sure I'm good. I'm not good. I'm not good. <sighs> Don't overextend yourself on my account. I can take a hit. Okay. Then, Nelly. I've never, this one's actually caught. Success. Success. So five fingertips are gone at this point. Do you need me to uh, <laughs> Can you hold a knife anymore? I don't need a knife. I I don't need a knife. Mm -hmm. To hold. I don't need to hold a knife. <clears throat> I I'm not good at wielding one anyway. Um lastly. I'll do one more attempt for each. Try Very once. Cock. Success. Six fingertips gone. The loathsome and painful procedure is complete. Mm hmm. You are missing. Some fingertips. Mm hmm. But you strengthen the coterie. Two left? Yes. Mm. On each. Everyone needs their fingers. Good for guns. pushing buttons on a burner phone, guns. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to try one more thing, which is Pavis of. Uh, no. Which is the sure. essence of air potion. You want to distill the elixir? Yes. All if right. I can. No, that's a bestial failure on that one. But. 
Do you want to expend willpower to re-roll up to three failed dice? Read those. Yes, I remember. Okay, yes. mark superficial willpower damage, please. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am... Um... Failures. It's a lot of dice. It is. Um, it's still a failure by one. But it's so. no longer a bestial failure? Or yeah. is it a complete no. failure? Well, I can't reroll hunger dice, so mm -mm. it is so it's still, still a bestial, bestial failure. failure. So not only does the ritual fail, but in a fit of peak anger and disgust, you wreck your own equipment. Great. You cannot perform this ritual again tonight, mm -hmm. and you suffer a compulsion. Oh, no. I'll offer you a choice. Yes. You can either suffer a compulsion of your clan bane, which is, of course, obsession with the occult, mm. or you can increase your hunger by one. I'm going to risk increasing my hunger by one. Duly noted. And I would still like to heal because I'm at full superficial damage and one aggravated. Well, you know what happens if you take any more superficial damage. It'll start bumping up to aggravated, so I think that's a great move. Mm -hmm. So in order to heal superficial, I need to rouse. Make a rouse check. Just one. Mm -hmm. Which could, of course, make you hungrier, which could start a very difficult loop of circumstances, but we'll see. May I ask a point of clarification? Mm. If we've taken aggravated and superficial, do we need to resolve the aggravated before the superficial can be mm. healed? Okay. Failure. Uh, failure. Yes. What's your total hunger now? Four. You are on the very edge of losing it. Mm -hmm. I cannot begin to tell you how disappointed I am, Eva. What would your sire say now? Katya sacrificed so much for you, and this is how you repay her? Devour the Nosferatu. Just take his blood and be done with it. You know it's going to happen eventually. And I drink. So you slake your thirst on Jasper. How much do you take? How many hunger dice do you remove? Just one. You are playing with fire. I do not get hungrier. You pass the rouse check? Mm -hmm. All good. <clears throat> Any other preparations before we look in again? on our compatriots. I do need Fire to ask Walker. Gary something. Um, we have two two more scenes to resolve. Your question to Gary and the medical and my preparation facility mm -hmm. and preparations. No, I think that's about everything I can do. I will just sit and twiddle my thumbs that are left. <laughs> Disgusting. Let's resolve the question to Gary Golden first, and then as our final scene in this chapter, we'll go back to the medical facility and find out how Nellie has prepared. I'm at your service, Baron. When this is all resolved, I'd like to have a fairly in-depth conversation with you, Gary, because I think you would agree with me that this is, um, shall we say, a transitional time for the city? Well, I'm of the opinion that should you survive, and I do hope you do, changes must be made. One way or another, I will not forget your assistance, but might I intrude upon you for one more thing? Well, I have cleared your tab. Do you know what happened to my people, Campbell, the others? Ah, a valid question. As far as we are able to determine, I fear that your Mr. Campbell was taken. You must assume that what he knows, they know. As for the rest of your people, I was hoping to spare you this information and 
until a calmer moment, but most of them are deceased. Those who are not are arrested. Now, if you would please leave this to us. Only so many more hours till dawn, but thank you. I fear so, and uh, as they say, tick tock, tick tock. Yeah, tick tock, tick tock. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of hoist the bag over my shoulder. I'm like, and just turn and walk towards the SUV. We return to the medical facility where the attending doctor who saved Lavender's life has entered the room and asks you, what are you doing? She needs rest. She's stable. She's got, give her 48 hours and we'll see what happens. If she gets worse, we'll get her to a proper hospital. If she doesn't, we'll make some decisions, but you gotta, you, you gotta let her rest. Okay, give us a few minutes, Jesus. Just a few minutes and then you need to leave. She's in no condition for visitors. I okay. activate awe. Well, there are visitors and then there are visitors. I mean, and you're clearly uh, the other kind of visitor. So Thank I you. have some charts to fill out. So I'll just, Great. unless you need something. I will let you know. You want some coffee? Uh, how long does that take to make? I'm a little... I, I, I've never made it here. I don't Make know. a fresh pot, please. Yeah, perfect. you got it, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah, bye. 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 He leaves you in peace. Nellie, you asked me earlier tonight. You asked me what it felt like to be a ghoul for so long. And it always felt like I was just a pawn in somebody else's game. It never felt like I had my life. And then when I became a Lissandra, I can't really say that much, that much changed. You know, some things got better, but oddly, in these past, you know, few hours, and with all this shit that's happened, I got like a brief glimpse, like just a brief moment of what it felt like to at least own the board. And I don't know what's going to happen tonight. But it just never, it never feels like you can win. Yeah. But perhaps if we survive tonight, we can work together to make this life a little bit better. I don't know how. There's always going to be somebody higher ranking than you. There's always going to be somebody to answer to. You would encounter that in a mortal life too. Hence, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Doctor comes back with the coffee pot. Fresh. Wonderful. If you could give me and my associate a couple of more minutes just to tie up some loose ends here, I would really greatly appreciate it. You want cream and sugar? Got it. I'll be back. Okay. I don't know. All right. We don't have much time, so we've got to take care of business here, and then we've got to get back. So yeah. Um, I do have something for you, though. Um, Lavender's sniper rifle she always has it near her somewhere if i could just figure out where oh it's not hard to find it's uh it's leaning up in the corner of the room right i Lavender's it's bed. right there so you can just okay if nobody's looking <laughs> i'm going to you, just... you send him away for cream and sugar you're alone so you take the high-powered sniper rifle that I absolutely do. Lavender normally uses? All right. It's I, got a full I over, clip. I over one. You do. Perhaps consider what I'm saying. Hmm, excuse me, correction. It's got a full clip, except for one shot. 
Yeah, I do. I owe her, don't I? Yeah. At that moment, I'd actually like to reach down to my necklace specifically. I'm assuming that I assume again that I'm above ground. You're not. Remember that you're underground Copy. in a medical facility somewhere Copy. in the tunnels within the war. Well, I'm going to do my best and hopefully this signal gets out, but I'm going to go ahead and press the panic button that's attached to my necklace. You want to bring, so they will come to where you are. Really? That lights up. So. Sometimes. So then I'm going to hold off on it then and wait till I get to a, a specific spot then. Um, next right. preparation I would like to do is use, oh, there was a couple of things I wanted to do. I wanted to actually send a distress message as a text message to um, my coordinator at the Roosevelt Hotel. Ensure that things are intact there. No one's necessarily hit it yet, or I haven't had any message on that. So I just wanted to send a like a number three. My person who coordinates over there would know what that means, and he can just be on his way for that. And the same number three is going to go to my PA's um, Art and Angelica. It's basically a security protocol of Nellie's kind of off the grid for right now, and I'm going to just snap the phone and toss it. That's one of the burner phones. Yep. Um, I'm gonna look down at my ring, make sure that I have enough for a clean of the insect, have that intact. Um, I also usually have some um, bloodstones um, ready at the hand. I'm assuming I still have those with me or? Three. Hey, that's a good number. Wonderful. Um, I have to go give that to somebody who would use it really well. Um, I have my knives. Good. Yeah, as best as I can be right now. Very well. It sounds like the preparations are complete. So for one text message I would like to send mm -hmm. to Chloe that says, if you don't hear from me by the end of the night, do your best to bring them all down. Noted. And I believe I need to roll against being bonded to Jasper. Should you survive this night, we'll resolve that too. Right. Okay. And we're doing. Very well. Preparations made. Plans laid, such as they are, in the heat of the moment. This is an appropriate place to pause this chapter of our story for now. We're going to wait one outside the mission for the action to begin. And meanwhile, we'll return to inside the mission where another confrontation is still occurring. Inside the mission, a tense standoff is taking place. You angry? <coughs> Does it hurt? Is it hurting? Um. That's uh. your beast, Annabelle. You heard my words and knew them to be true and it made you sad. I saw your heart break when you realized the futility of your cause. And then your beast found a way to make you angry again. It's the easiest trick of the mind to turn anyone you don't like into the tower. So worthy of opposition. It's not anybody that I don't like. There are fronts all over the world. There always will be. There'll always be people like you to take down. And maybe I'm not gonna be the best at sticking around to rule people, because that's not my style, but there will always be a need for the soldiers of the revolution. Then take me down. That's I attempt to get closer to Adrian. You're not impeded by the power that repelled you. You can step forward and act normally. I leap forward and I grab his throat. What is your intention to do? Are you seeking to harm him? Are you seeking to injure him? I'm, uh, or are you merely trying to hold him? 
hold him. So, Adrian, how will you respond to this sudden attack? I surrender to it, and I look at Annabelle. So you will relent to it. So, in a moment, X has grabbed you by the shoulders, by the throat, and you allow it. Annabelle, your window is closing. I feed. Now, <laughs> now is the time, <clears throat> X, to let your beast off the chain. Yeah. Is that what I'm hearing? She's gonna be here anyway. She may as well fight for me. I understand. I need you to make a grapple roll. Okay. So, strength and brawl. Adrian, will you allow this? Life is surrender. I absolutely allow it. One success. It's all it takes because he's not trying to stop you. You sink your fangs into his throat just above the priestly collar. The blood flows from his veins and arteries and flesh, filling your mouth. It's hot. I move up fast and I pull X off. Your intention is to break this apart. Yes. Okay. X, will you allow it or mm -hmm. will you resist? I am I quenching any hunger so far. At this moment, you are not. The blood tastes strange. It tastes thin and watery and cold. It turns to ashes in your mouth. Ugh. 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 I let go. Oh. <laughs> if you wanted Holy Communion, all you had to do was ask. <laughs> X. You slake no hunger. You suffer a point of aggravated damage Ugh. from the terrible liquid that is now coursing its way through your body. <clears throat> you feel as though you might never be able to slake your hunger again. What did you do to him? I would not expect lions to understand the power of the lamb. I didn't do anything. Lamb of bullshit! You attacked all my kindred! All my friends, all my family in the valley. Your friends and are monsters! You look in the mirror every day and you think you're better? I am bound for hell, Annabelle! I've made my peace with that! When are you gonna realize it's not about you? Your beast is telling you you are the only creature that stalks tonight, the night. You will feast on endless mortals to keep your one life from the fire that awaits you. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> shut up! Just shut up already! I take out my dagger and attack X. I let go to my frenzy of fury. Hmm. Roll all your unspent willpower. Wow! Two, four, five successes. Five successes. Your beast doesn't obey you. Perhaps I, it's the filthy blood that you drank, perhaps it's him or the dagger that he's wielding that's now driving forward against you, but you can't summon her up. Annabelle? I push X across the room with all my strength. I grab the hand that has the dagger and I get up close. Strength and brawl against strength and brawl. So for Adrian, that is not your best die pool. Mm -hmm. It's six dice. Oh, uh, uh, prowess? Yes. I fail. Is it a complete failure? For her oh. hunger. Just a rouse check. Ah. So. a girl. Yeah. Come on, baby doll. X couldn't do it, but I know you can. Do the thing. Six. Six successes against? Not six successes. Not six successes. <laughs> you intercept the incoming blade and shove him back. Drive him against the wall with the cross. You 
going to break my heart. So he broke mine. Don't you see? You saw the way out. And now you've convinced yourself. These people you found, what do they have in common with you? Do you think any of the monsters you've met in the night share your vision for this world to come? No. They never had a vision like this. Now that they see it, they're doing their best. That's all we can ask for on this earth. Call them off. Leave Los Angeles. Leave now and I'll let you walk away. I'll let everyone walk away. It is at this moment when you all hear a sound. For some of you, it's not unexpected. For others, a surprise. And it is the distinctive sound of small arms fire in the middle distance. Somewhere in or around this mission compound, guns are being fired. Call them off. Come with me, and Los Angeles will be safe. Don't do it! Kill him! Kill him! Do you want to kill me, Annabelle? No. But I will never trust the system. And I slam him back into the wall. She slams you back into the wall. You take uh, superficial damage from the bruising and the pounding against the ancient stones of the chapel. You are not so wounded that you can't continue. Call them off, please, please. Small arms fire continues sporadically. It doesn't sound like they've got a bead on their targets. It's never too late to come home. You know that salvation awaits you. If you want to kill me, you can. But I suggest, if that's the path you want to walk, that your friends might need you. Hit them with the gas. No! I take, I rip the cross off the wall. The one above the altar. So you make a leap and tear it from the stones. He there's, was he was up against the sound that of metal. Wall. There's a sound of tearing wood. It's in your hands. What do you want to do? I drive the point into Adrian. Adrian. You know what she is and you know what she can do. Do you want to try to save yourself? I want to let the Lord our God decide. I don't move out of the way, but I hold my crucifix aloft, and I ask God to do as he will. I come up behind Annabelle and I rip his head off. Multiple things happen at once. Roll seven dice, Adrian. Annabelle, I have to ask you, are you trying to kill him? Adding your potence. Roll strength and melee. X, strength and brawl. And your attempt, as I have understood it, is to remove his head from his shoulders. Forcibly. How many successes, Adrian? Uh, three onks and one um, super onk. Super onk. So four successes. Mm. Remember that you can spend willpower if you need to re-roll fail dice. That is dice. a double bestial failure. You can spend willpower to re-roll up to three failed dice. If you do that, will it take away the bestial failure or are you stuck with it? They're both in hunger days. So you're stuck with it because you're not going to have enough dice to overcome it. I can spend a willpower to reroll failed dice? Mm-hmm. How many? <laughs> Up to three. Great. So we have a bestial failure. One success. Mm. Uh, 
Uh, that's six successes. Oh, there's no way I can make that. Six successes. A bestial failure. <laughs> one success. And one success at attempting to rip the head off. Let's resolve the easy one first. Unfortunately, <laughs> you're not strong enough to remove the head from the shoulders. It hurts, <laughs> but the head stays where it is. I appreciate your efforts, X. Your time. Your anger takes over. It's blinding. <laughs> there is nothing in your field of vision but red. All you meant to do was stop him. All you meant to do was bring him down. You didn't mean to do what happens next. Adrian, the power of your faith emanates like a shining light, not just from your cross, but from you. And Annabelle, you take two points of aggravated damage as you ram the entire cross through his rib cage, his sternum, his organs, straight through the stone wall behind him with such force. <laughs> that, the, <laughs> that the entire wall crumbles away. Adrian finally experiences <laughs> what he has considered, dreaded, and dreamed of all his life. I was wrong. You're not a miracle. You're just another monster. I'll be waiting for you in the fire, Annabelle. I'll see you there. Go. We have to no. go right now. Okay, I get it. I get it. But we have to go right now. <laughs> I attempt to grapple Annabelle. I grab his earpiece and I let him take me. Take the earpiece from Adrian, leaving his lifeless body. And you leave the chapel by the opposite door. Outside, it's chaos. Soldiers running, footsteps, small arms fire, and a red, roiling mist, gas, closes in on around you. It's fine, just, just hold your breath. And here, I think, is the appropriate place to pause this chapter of our vampire story for now outside the mission. The action has started. To resolve this intense, complicated encounter, I'm going to ask you to play with me a variation of our old favorite, three turns and out. So, I'm gonna ask each of you, what is your intention for this encounter? What tactics do you wish to employ? What powers do you think you'll use? And what are your goals? And any contingencies you might have. And then we'll make a series of rolls. The margins will determine your success, your failure, and your damage. And then I'll give you some choices. Success and failure are not guaranteed. Victor Temple. Having changed into my spare shirt and tie out of the old ruined one, my plan is to stay outside with the car on Overwatch with the binoculars so I can ideally help coordinate things. If I see any soldiers moving around outside, I will crush their will into obedience and they will work for me. And be ready to drive everybody out of here once we're clear. Do I understand that you would be in the driver's seat? Yes. Hmm. How many dots and drive do you have? Not a lot, but enough to get us out of here. Mm -hmm. 
Normally I have people for that, but they're in short supply these nights. Eeb. Knowing that uh, Ava and Jasper will probably be going in for uh, Annabelle and X, my my um, desire would be to go in with stealth and uh, try to obfuscate their um, their search and rescue uh, by casting a shadow cast behind me uh, with any frontline enemies and um, on my next turn I would use arms of Aramon to take out anybody any enemies in front and shoot whoever else I can't grasp. So let me summarize a bit if I may. <clears throat> You're going in using stealth. You're going to use the powers of oblivion to try to cover your compatriots when you can. You'll use those horrifying arms of Armand to attack in combination with your firearm. Yeah. Point of clarification, if you're going in, are you taking the rifle or are you leaving the rifle in the SUV? I think I would, seeing the mission that I want to go on, I would leave the rifle because I would rather go in two pistols and shadows because it is no longer a sniper mission for me. My plan doesn't change, but now I know I have access to the rifle should circumstances warrant. Nellie. Oh, I'm sorry, may I say one more? Ah, absolutely. I had a set of binoculars. So upon immediate arrival, I would scope out the place, hand binoculars over to Victor. Nellie? Um, Nellie would actually take some of the bloodstones that she had in her pocket, the three, and I would actually hand it over to Eva. Use them as you, you need. Um, and she's actually gonna look at Victor and go, whatever happens, I still love you. And she's gonna go follow in um, with Eve, right, using uh, Cling of the Insect, so coming up and over things, um, wherever I can, using Chorus of Vitae to splash acid blood everywhere. Um, and I'm gonna blink and use Celerity as fast as I can, and um, whatever possible, I'm gonna use my new power of unearing aim, just quick. When you have to combat someone in melee, what weapon will you use? Oh, absolutely, my... You have your uh, favorite knife. Yep. I have an extra knife and I hand that over to Nellie just in case she needs it. Right. Jasper. Knowing and using Unseen Passage combined with um, Ghost in the Machine so that cameras can't pick me up. I continue through using Obfuscate, trying looking for X and Annabelle if convenient. And I do that until not feasible anymore or I am caught, at which point I will use my knife and the mace to crush everybody in front of me until I find X. And of course your hand is protected. Yeah. With the with a hockey goalie's mitt. The mate. hockey goalie's mitt. It's not that omit that important detail. No. For any photographic evidence that needs to be done. Other than that, I'm pretty point A to point B, very straightforward. I'm not really worrying about who gets in my way. Eva? I will be obfuscated behind Jasper. I will give it some space behind, but I would follow in and if he does not have a handle on dealing with an attacker. Only then will I reveal myself using either Zeus's fury or movement of the mind to remove attackers. Ellie. Um, just as a uh, contingency plan, I do hit the panic button at this point. Ah, so you activate Baron Abram's gift. Yes. An important detail. Here we go. So, we understand how you are undertaking the mission. 
thanks to Eve's description of the compound, you've got a rough layout uh, of what you see. The attackers who are going in will roll first. So, we'll begin with Jasper. Yeah. I'd like you to make three rolls for us, please. Okay. First of all, let's make dexterity and stealth roll and add your obfuscate. Uh, that is 12 with a critical. 12 successes. Yeah. Strength and melee, if you would please. Mm -hmm. Plus my prowess, which I will roll up. I do not get hungrier. Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight successes. And one more. Roll all your unspent willpower. Not my highest die pool. Three successes. Three successes. So. One important question for Eva. Jasper goes in, obfuscated. Are you on foot? Um, if I can elevate myself with movement of the mind, I will attempt that. So? Because I'm not uh, so sneaky as Jasper. Let's hold your rolls for a moment then and give you some choices. Jasper, you go in stealthily. You are unseen, as far as you know, sneaking past soldiers, moving by guards. There's a lot of commotion in the courtyard that you enter. Soldiers all seem to be moving past you, and converging on what looks like a small chapel near the center of the garden and adjacent to a cemetery. The choice is Follow them, or go elsewhere to search. Follow them. Follow them. Eva, two rolls for you right now. Intelligence and occult, both times, please. With hunger dice. Oh yes. Absolutely. Six critical success. Critical success? Is it a is it a messy critical? No. Hmm. And another one. Well, two. <clears throat> Only three successes on the set. Only three successes. As you move in in support of Jasper, you spot the first of what looks like a magical ward. It isn't blood sorcery, it's something else, but you know a protective barrier when you see it and you are able to both avoid it. But you missed the second. Mm. There's a flash of light, and you feel that pain that you've experienced before. <laughs> whatever these people are, whatever makes them able to do this, it hurts you to your core. Take an aggravated point of damage from the missed ward. <coughs> May as well. Just Eva. Okay. Technically, she found the ward by tripping it, <laughs> saving you the effort. Uh, Jasper's unspent power roll was three. Okay. Nelly. Using clinging of the insect, you are going up and over, scaling the outer wall of the compound, skittering across the red clay tile roofs, down 
into the courtyard below looking for targets mm -hmm. or looking for something else? Looking for targets. Looking for targets. Let's have three rolls, please. Two of them are your Dex and Melee. Eve, you're on deck. Two, three, four successes. Mm -hmm. And the second roll. Oof. I'm going to spend a willpower to reroll. Okay. Take superficial willpower damage and reroll up to three fail, but not the hunger die. One, two, three, four successes. Four successes on the second one. Last, roll all your unspent willpower. As a point of clarification, I want to say that to my melee roll should be added the damage of my weapons, which is a plus two for the dagger and whatever the mace does. I did not add mm -hmm. those to the roll. No, that's all right. Okay. Let's add that here. Three. Three again. Okay. You were the first to draw blood. Your hunt is successful. Several soldiers fall for your blade and the celerity that drives them. And they find they simply can't keep up with you as you blink back and forth like a blue undead pinball through the courtyard, slashing, stabbing, and cutting. That's when you see the red gas. It's begun to seep into the courtyard from across compound. You've never seen anything like this before. It creeps along the ground, slow, roiling, boiling towards you, it begins to spread out and rise like a crimson fog. Eeb? Make a rouse check. That's your first roll. That's three dice, right? It's one. Just one. Oh, just one. Oh, the one blood die. One blood. Ah, uh, I pass. Roll your unspent willpower. Three successes. Three successes. And then finally, Manipulation and a cult. <laughs> two successes. Only two? Yeah. You quickly find yourself embroiled in combat with a pair of soldiers in body armor, but they're not using, not using sidearms or rifles or machine guns. Instead, they're wielding short, very sharp swords using power of oblivion. You're able to blind one, and wrap the other, the shadow tendrils of the arms of Armand, and beat him to death against the stones of the ah! courtyard. That is when you see the red gas and Nelly standing within a few feet of it on the other side of the courtyard. We gotta get out. Let's go, we have to go. Victor Temple, out by the car, rifle at the ready, comms. You had no warning that this was coming, so I'm going to ask you a question before I ask you to roll. Another SUV approaches, moving fast, headlights, picking you out against your own vehicle, screeches to a halt. Doors open. Four armed men pile out. The click clack of their automatic weapons sounding in your ears. They point their weapons at you. We're here for Nelly. Where's the Baron? 
She's inside. Do you require assistance, sir? Absolutely. Yes, sir. One of the soldiers stays with you, hands you his radio. Put the earpiece in. You can hear the combat chatter of these soldiers as they go in. They waste no time. They open up with their submachine guns the instant they're into the compound. The night air is filled with the sound of small arms fire. Headed for the chapel. Mm -hmm. Jasper. Yeah. Your path is blocked as a familiar figure steps out of the cloistered shadows. She's alone, but you recognize her. It's the red-headed woman uh. you saw at Griffith Observatory. Right. Her face is still scarred and burned wherever struck her with Zeus's fury. Mm -hmm. And she smiles through cracked, wounded lips. Finally, <laughs> finally, finally. I'm gonna take that. She holds out a hand. What do you want to do in this moment? If she says that to me, I assume that means she can see me. So I will say, the wrath of God falls heaviest on the faithful, and I will cave her head in with the mace. Let's look at those strength and melee rolls you rolled earlier. Yeah. Eva, you see this happening. You see the woman you burned mm -hmm. last night at the observatory still standing, still alive, blocking Jasper's way and holding out her hand toward him. What's your choice? I assume I'm already un, uh, visible after tripping the ward. Mm -hmm. In that case, if my cover is blown, I will, I will attempt to hold her in place with movement of the mind as he strikes her. Hmm. That critical success is going to come in handy now. She can't fight you both. She's gonna focus on Jasper. Maybe she should have focused on Eva. <laughs> She's grasped by an invisible force emanating from the power of your vitae. And she's held in place, allowing Jasper to add another two successes to the role that he made earlier. It's a devastating, massive blow. Hear the satisfying and very sickening sound of a skull being <laughs> smashed in. And she slides almost bonelessly to the courtyard ground. Let's continue. And I activate Unseen Passage again. From inside the chapel, you hear a noise, a terrible, wailing, inhuman cry of a soul in desperate pain and despair. I charge in. Charge into the chapel. Neg neglecting to activate Unseen Passage in that I'm surprised by this. Nellie and Ebe, you've met up on the opposite side of the courtyard facing the red gas, which is continuing to creep forward toward you at a quick walking pace. Stay or go? Go, I'm not running into that. I'm backing out too. I'm using Blink. Can I grab her and use Blink by any chance? You absolutely can. So I'm grab onto her. Are you going to try to leave the compound or just to get to the other side of the courtyard where there's no gas? Get to the other side with uh, no gas. Okay, you blink your way there. Whatever soldiers are still here, most of them are busy fighting an invading force, Nelly which you have summoned using the gift of Baron Abrams that he gave you so long ago. And the sound of small arms fire chatter continues from the main entrance. The other soldiers are surrounding the chapel. Victor, you can hear the general direction of the fight. It seems like Nelly's forces at least have an equal chance, the upper hand. They advise you to have the vehicle ready to go. 
I'm got the driver's side door open and I'm basically standing in it with the with the binoculars. Sir, would you like me to drive? Yes, please, actually. That's what I heard. Okay. <laughs> he slides into the driver's seat, takes out his pistol and lays it on the seat next to him. When he actually gets in the driver's seat, I heft up the rifle, and instead of the binoculars, I'm looking through the scope of the rifle. You're gonna use the night scope? Yeah, I don't shoot anybody, but now I'm... Well, the night scope allows you to see from the, from the top of the little hill outside the mission, partially into the courtyard below, and you can pick out individual figures. The first people you see are Eve and Nelly. After they finished racing across the courtyard, courtyard to escape this red crimson mist that is slowly beginning to fill the entire courtyard. Over the radio, I call, I have eyes on Nellie. She's, you know, I, I try and be like southeast, you know, southeast corner of the courtyard, however I can define. Copy, where copy, I, keep this channel clear. If I see a hostile, I take the shot. Give him one you more thing. You see a hostile, you take the shot? Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, you know what? I don't. They don't know about this position yet. I don't. I hold that. Don't reveal your position. I don't give it up yet. Chapel door flies open. Face to face with Annabelle and X. <laughs> Found you. Stay or go? Stay. Behind them, inside the chapel, you can see a very large section of wall has been forcibly moved, probably by a heavy blow, and the sprawled body of a, of a man with a huge wooden and metal cross driven through his sternum right to the point of the crossbars. He is definitely dead. Huh. I look at X and I say, found you, friend. I told you I'd come for you. X waves weakly and says, Can we go now? Come on. Let's go, both of you. Let's. Victor, you hear a burst of static on the radio. And then a question for you. Mr. Temple? Go on. We have prisoners. We're not taking prisoners tonight. Copy that. There's a loud burst of automatic weapons fire from the courtyard. We'll deal with the stains on your humanity at a later time. Nelly, the commander of your bodyguard unit, rendezvous with you and reports that the location is secure. Copy that. We need to get an exit strategy out so that our compatriots can get out of here. What's that gas? Oh, we gotta go. It's creeping closer. Nelly, you know you can avoid it by using celerity. Mm -hmm. Those of you who don't have celerity aren't gonna make it so easily. Now, some of you have experienced this before and you know what to expect. Let's see how fast you can go. Okay. Strength and athletics. Everyone who isn't using celerity. Is it possible again for me to grab Eve? You want to use Blink and haul her along? Yes. Good. You can cover only half the distance. Is that getting out of harm's way? We're about to find out. One success. One success. Six successes. Six successes, one success. Nelly? Ooh. Deep, 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 deep. Roll strength and athletics. That's cute. Difficulty six. Oh, I'm not gonna make that with the amount of dice I have. Do you want to Great. surge the blood? Yes. Oh, I forgot about that. Spend a point of willpower, take a point of superficial willpower damage, add two dice to your pool. Can you now make it? If you roll all successes? 
Nope, still short. You can do it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Well, let's try. Let's see what happens. Nope, just four. Four successes. So, Jasper is able to outrun the gas and leave the compound. Eva, Nelly, and Eve. The gas surrounds you, engulfs you, fills your undead lungs, and you hear things, terrible things in the mist. You hear cries and screams and wails and sorrowful keening, huh. like lost souls in the night. The gas burns. <laughs> Two aggravated damage each before you can stumble out of this red hell and out of the compound. It leaves red marks all over your exposed flesh. Little tiny pinpricks of hate and pain. You have what you came for. Looking around, do I see that uh, that they're moving? That they've gotten Jasper. I mean, that they've gotten um, X and X and Annabelle, Annabelle, who will also take damage from the gas, are with them. I start running. I blink. And you're out. When I see them coming out, I open the back door to the SUV and I summon Hester. Rouse check? I did pass it. No additional hunger. Stay or go, everyone. Go. 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 No. Piling into the SUVs. It's like a scene from a disaster movie. You feel an answering tug in your heart, Victor. Just the faintest pull. Maybe this is what Baron Abrams felt when the beckoning touched him, just the faintest reciprocating yank at whatever is inside your heart. With a sudden, deafening roar, the walls of the mission begin to crack and the ground begins to move beneath your feet. Feels like an earthquake. It is an earthquake, exactly as you planned with Zelios and the Weird Sisters. The structure begins to collapse, fall, rain tiles and stones. A huge cloud of dust billows up into the night sky. And as you pull away, receding into the night, the gas mixes with the dust cloud and begins to seep up into the air like some kind of crimson maelstrom, straight upwards maybe where it came from. This is an excellent place to pause this chapter of our vampire story. Bloodied, wounded, but not beaten. You leave the scene. Some of you must heal wounds and some of you must deal with wounds that are invisible to the naked eye. An unusually silent ride away from that horror show ends with you back under the tender loving care of your host for the last nights, Gary Golden, in his warrens far below the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. I take it congratulations are in order. Zelios yeah. tells me you won. I guess, yeah. Won. I have seldom seen a less enthusiastic winning team. It's complicated. And uh, uh, Miss Eva, if I, if I may be so bold, you look terrible. <sighs> yes, I've looked better, it's true. 
<clears throat> but you're safe. Thanks for coming for us. Yeah, well... Also, I'm sorry I tried to eat Annabelle, and if you have to kill me for vampire rules, I get it. What? Uh, Fuck can, the rules. We can deal with that. Never. Doesn't matter. Miss Annabelle, a pleasure to see you again. Welcome back. You also look terrible. Los Angeles, you know? It has been remarked. Yeah. You staked a guy. I thought that was what? supposed to be the other way around. Yeah. That was you. I did what I had to do. Yeah. Protect the family. Sorry, Nellie. We'll talk about that later. Right now, I just need to make sure you're okay. Please excuse me. I have been informed that uh, more visitors are arriving. Perhaps there are other survivors that we had not yet accounted for. We made sure not to come straight back here. We weren't tailed. Yeah, I shall return. Thanks. Thank you. You know, um, mm -hmm. I'm glad we're all back here together, but this all only happened because we were apart. They waited till we were apart. They even came after me. Yeah, they did. What happened with Jeanette? Last I heard, you were with her in Saint Santa Monica. It's complicated. She brought up some bad memories, and I saw a chance to leave, and so I went to Jesus camp, and it turned out not so great. Why Isn't would you always? do that? They offered comfort. They offered a way out of They thought they thoughts. could save us. How? I saw a vision. I touched one, and it was like he took the voices away. It was peaceful. And I wanted to leave, so I made a choice. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. How do you for making a choice? One yeah. that was your own. Thank you. How many of them did we take out? A lot. All of them, oh. as far as I could tell. But it seems like the one who was in charge got taken out before we got there. Yeah. Adrian thought I was different and special or some bullshit. That seems to be a trend. <laughs> it's just because I hadn't killed anybody. <laughs> That's it. Well, now you're fucked up like the rest of us. Congratulations. Just because he had a really tough neck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think we got a lot of time to decompress, but I gotta ask you, dude, what, what the fuck? Like, wh who, what, who got staked? What, who's an Adrian? What, G Bible can't, what? Adrian, as far as I can tell, was the head of a rogue section of the Inquisition. The ones with true faith. Society of Leopold. Religious. Yeah. And he was very single-minded in his purpose, and they were not going to stop until Los Angeles was theirs. And I warned him. I'm not a pacifist. Everybody always says that I'm a pacifist. I just never wanted to give in to the beast, because once you do, you start to forget who you are, and I never wanted that. They have weapons, Victor, like new stuff, like helmets that break our abilities, or... Yeah, ran into that. Yeah, we've seen sunglasses that suppress everything. I knew it! They uh, also have weapons, and I point at the mace, that burn on contact because of their faith. Well, let me just get uh, all the heavy shit out of the way, then. A lot of us are going. Yeah. Only ones they kept were you two. The Prince, the Cine Show, gone. Gone. For now. And the Camarilla, yeah. I'm not gonna... No, I mean... Stay gone. Fiona, no. lots of hours. No. Gone. Death. Finally, final death. As I wouldn't expect to see them anytime soon. You were the only two that got hit that stayed in LA. Everyone else was destroyed or taken away. Nines, it's fine. He's hurt, bad. Mark, hurt. Bad, but alive. Archangel's alive. Good for her. She's fine. Unless she stubbed her toe, she doesn't have a scratch on her. 
What happened to you? Uh, several gunshots, a little bit of that red mist. Did they happen to mention what that mist was while you were there? We didn't get that far, no. I'm very curious. But, but as far as we can tell, the Inquisition pulled out all the stops in their strike. For what it's worth, and I reach in my pocket and I pull out a very greasy paper bag. Hmm. And I just put it down and I say, Carver, let us know you were in trouble. Uh, the message written on the greasy paper bag in childish scrawl does seem to be Carver's and it's a very, very simple message. It says, Baby B in Hunter Jail in LA, headed east. Good luck, Carver. I kept that because maybe he could see something else. But honestly, it's yours. If you want to know, if you don't want to know, if you want to throw it in the trash. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Carver is an asshole. He'll stick his neck out for no one, but, you know, he has his uses. What would have happened if we'd come back and the camera was still around? Hmm. I'm not doing this anymore. That was I mean, the last one. Hopefully, none of us are doing this anymore. No, hopefully, I mean, that I'm not was doing this anymore. This coterie doesn't work. You two are barons. You're what you are. I'm leaving. You guys can have your parties, whatever. But I'm going. Again, man. This happened because you happened. All three of you wanted power. Maybe not you. The two of you wanted power. And you caused them to come down on us. So I'm going to go away and I'm going to disappear. I don't want to ever have that happen again. And I don't want to have a discussion. We also only won because we were together. If you got to go, you got to go. I get it. I know. Zelios, I know. Victor. I know. He's made his choice. Let him go. I must concur with Smith Griffiths, at least for now. She has a point. And there is a visitor here whom I did not expect and whom you, my friend, will wish to speak with. We can do it. Look, hey, we did this dance a year ago. I gave all of you fucking space. You know where I am. You know I love every single one of you. Whatever. Yes. Whatever you need, Gary. Does the name Beckett mean anything to you? Are you serious? He's real? The archaeologist? Not much time remains before dawn. It's been an eventful night. But there is one more event that we should visit. Guests. The Nosferatu Warrens underneath Hollywood Forever Cemetery is the scene of a most unusual meeting. Colleagues, associates, Mr. Lila, pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to my home. It's interesting. That's one word for it. <laughs> I think my help here is probably superfluous. I will leave you to make your own introductions. I have some things to attend to, and I will inform you when the hour grows too late for safety. Thanks, cousin. In the meantime, I would like you to meet my associate. May I, may I associate? Associate. By all means. Mr. Beck, excuse me. Thank you, Gary. <laughs> well, it seems I've suddenly arrived on an eventful evening. Yeah. Mm. Understand it correctly. I'm sorry, we would have pulled out the red carpet for you sometimes, literally, if <laughs> we'd been more prepared. <laughs> been a lot. Fair enough. Um, I guess Annabelle, Jasper, Nellie G, Victor Temple. 
Good to see some faces, to some names. Appreciate that. Delilah, good to see that you are safe and well. Oh my God, it's Daddy Warbucks in person. This is kind of cool. <laughs> you were one of only two messages I tried to send before they break this thing, so. Well, I'm honored. You look amazing. Thank you. I'm like, I'm like a vampire now. Isn't that kind of cool? It is true. For those of you who have met Delilah before and seen her in person, she's got fangs that she didn't have before. Sorry, wasn't properly introduced to you. Who? It's Delilah. Hi, I'm Delilah. Uh, was leader, leader of the, the Thin Bloods. Oh, I've heard a lot about you, but I never actually met you. It's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. Hmm. That's a nice reaction. Does that work now that you've gone full time, as it were? How does that work with the with the community? Well, I've left them to make their own decisions. Some have also gone full time, because who would really want to sit there being a half sack of shit for the rest of their own lives? Um, some are making do. They still enjoy yoga in the sun, little pieces of shit, but whatever. Mm. But they're still loyal mm. to a fault sometimes. Hmm. Well, before the rest of the night gets on, as this is my one night in Los Angeles, I do have some questions, if you'll indulge me for a uh, bit. Uh, yes. I, sorry, I don't really know much about you other than that you're gangrel and you're real old and... I'm what you would have uh, best describe as maybe a, an archivist, an anthropologist, we'll say. So, in that interest, I wish to just um, come by for a bit before I head off to my next bout of business to the south. I want to hear some things about the history that's transgressed here. Seems quite a bit of interesting things have been afoot in yeah. Los Angeles nights. That is uh, amazing timing. Yes, it has been uh, highly eventful. Please, yes, anything. <laughs> yeah. To begin, just to satiate my own curiosity, um, Prince Vannevar, quite an individual. Uh, have any of you had any personal interactions with this? Mm. Yes. Mm. Extensive. Certain rumors and whispers have come to me that perhaps he is a bit unstable, unpredictable even. Are these rumors true? Yes Absolutely. and yeah, no. Uh, I was with him last night. Hmm. Um, I attempted to speak with him as a brother Ventru in one of our highest and holiest of places, and the rumors that he had lost access to some of his faculties were true, but the man I saw last night was in complete control of who he was, and that actually made him far worse. I'm sorry, the last time I saw him, he was going on about this Book of Nod and how it's the way of the life and that we should pay attention to it. <laughs> so happens, I managed to retrieve mine, and yes, for whatever he regained of himself, he did not lose his fervence for the writings of what he saw is coming to pass. He believed until what may have well been his final moments that Gehenna was upon us. Well, we're all still here, is it right? Mm-hmm. Hmm. It, it was just last night. Oh. A shame that his intent may have been a bit misplaced. Do we know if the prince, the good, good prince, happened to survive the events of this evening? I was there with him and the sheriff in the Senate show. The sheriff and I are here. The prince and the Senate show are unaccounted for, and I do not think he would have let his presence gone unheard were he able. We do know that apparently only Annabelle and another associate of ours were kept. Anyone else that fell into their clutches were taken to parts unknown for an unknown fate. Is there any indication of any other members of the Camarilla that have interests in establishing themselves as a new prince, should indeed Vannevar be no longer with us? I don't think Strauss has any reason to want to become the prince, so that's him off the list. 
I have reason to suspect that the warlock is no longer in Los Angeles, but I cannot confirm that either. And the power mm. vacuum is fresh and new, so no rumblings yet. On that particular subject, Annabelle, right? Yeah. I've heard some things. Word of your name gets around these days, and I'm personally quite uh, delighted to make your acquaintance this evening. Pleasure's all mine. So, you're um, an upstart, if you will. <laughs> mm, that is probably the best way to put it. Yeah. You speak as a anarch, as almost a um, respected equal, almost, to the Camarilla. It's complicated. Um, I am still so new to this. I've been dead for less than three years, and I think what I lack in political savvy or diplomacy or uh, general knowledge of our world, I make up for in my fervent devotion to the cause of making Los Angeles and hopefully one day the world better for our kind. And how do you propose to do this in this power vacuum? It's the thing. I never really had the answers for what comes next because the beast inside of all of us drives us to grab power or fame or knowledge. And I don't think that there's a way of saving it off forever as we grow, we become more powerful, we become wiser, but we also let our beasts get the best, best of us. So is there really a solve for that? Is democracy an option? Is there any way that we can live night to night without looking over our shoulders or, or being supplicants to some monarch? Well, if there's any consolation, you're not the first to try. Let's hope maybe you're the first to actually do it. Hoping. I'm also interested. Now, Delilah, you are, sorry, were a thin blood? Yeah. How did you come about this uh, rumored information? The capability to take in the true, pure form? I mean, I don't want to get anybody in trouble here. We're all friends here. We're all friends here, Indiana Jones with Claus says. Okay, we're all friends here. Uh, have you ever heard of a guy named Carter? Who? Carver. That one. Right? Of course. You have issues with him. You have issues with him. I know very few people who do not have issues with Carver. I do. Are you sure it's I mean, Carver? I could have sworn it was Carter. That, it's not even his real Colored name. Colored hair, so, yeah. leather jacket. Asshole, Carver, yeah. asshole, yeah. Mm, sure, him. All right, good to know. And what are your aspirations as a up and comer yourself? Uh, now that's a, that's an interesting question. I I don't real I don't have many. Um, I was owning a club, and then I became a thin blood, and then I became a vampire, and now I'm accidentally leading an army of thin bloods. And I don't know if I really want to, but like I can. You oh, see, a good a, a, a enthusiastic group. Based on... Um, Hashtag not a cult. Hashtag not a cult. Based on how you came about your new state and what I happen to know has happened to some others in our city, I mm -hmm. believe the term army is incredibly apt. I didn't encourage them. I said, feel your own vibes. How many are there? Ones that have turned or... Ones, ones that, that you consider your army? A good few. Are we talking about a handful, hundreds, thousands? And where do they reside? Hmm. 
is... How would she possibly know? Just out of curiosity, if it's her army, she should know where they're at. When I say army, I mean we all kind of got a bad situation and banded together, and for some reason they look to me for leadership. Oh. That sound familiar? I, this is the fucking worst. Yeah. They liked me the best because I could walk in the sunlight the most. They thought that was pretty cool. So they looked to me, and I guess I led them. Hmm. Now you lead them in the charge to diablerize other hmm. kindred. Well, we were power. only diablerizing the ones that were kind of harshing your vibes. That is actually not true. Oh. Yeah. That's that was a mistake. The one the one that uh, didn't I mm -hmm. took care of that one, and we told them if you're gonna feel your oats, feel your oats with the other ones. It's part of the invitation to yeah. come be in the valley, be safe in the valley. Yeah, yeah, means. yeah. Yeah, which is why we took care of that uh, outlier, and I do apologize. I don't know if you got my text that had a lot of sparkles on it. Again, right. bricked. Right. Well, so you know, super, like all the uwu faces with all the sparkles, that was sent to you with an I'm sorry. Excuse me. Oh, a woo? Uwu. 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 You know the uwu. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm familiar with important. The... Well, I... well, I think as Mr. Indiana Jones needs all the knowledge of the world. He needs to know what an uwu is. It's when you do a u, a w, and then a u, and it's doing like a really cute face, and that face goes uwu. Right. What's the Thank pause? You for the What's the pause? Delilah. Yeah. What next, then? Oh, I have no idea. I was really hoping you were going to help me. So you have an entire army of thin bloods, mm -hmm. many who have which been granted the knowledge that they can acquire unimaginable power by mm -hmm. the destruction of other kindred mm -hmm. with no direction or purpose. That's why I was gonna come to them, because they seem to have direction and purpose. <laughs> I don't know, direction and purpose seems to be a kind of a work in progress. Okay. Well, you've got direction, you've got purpose, but not the two together. Direction and purpose. Oh, um, interesting. I definitely have some thoughts on the direction, but- um, I don't have any of those. Before we get to that, Mr. Beckett, um, I can say unabashedly I am a fan. Many of the stories I'd heard had led me to believe that you either could not still be walking the earth, maybe never did, so to be able to share a table even briefly is an honor. Yeah. But if a fraction of what I know about you is true, you are not here for simple curiosity, and you also have not brought her here out of simple curiosity, and so I have the opportunity to ask the foremost expert on such things. We will know them by the time of thin blood. The prince, the Seneschal, wanted more than anything to know where you were and where your people were, and I was prepared to face the final death to shield you, because whatever you are, Whatever danger you represent, and I do believe you are all dangerous, and the kindred who have met the final death to empower you know you are dangerous. You're also young. You need a chance. You all need a chance to be whatever you are going to be these nights. But it was written this would happen, Beckett. It was written this would happen. <sighs> I've spent the better part of three centuries seeking out the truth behind us, our history. Maybe to that our purpose, who knows? A book you hold, one, holds to it tightly, it will only draw more danger your direction. But like all tomes of old, there are those who interpret it as it was likely intended and those that follow it to a T. And if the Inquisition's events this evening have shown anything, that way lies some dangerous thinking. <laughs> I personally believe that things are cyclical. I do not think that there is a coming end to end all ends. Maybe it's supposed to happen. Maybe it's a new beginning as well. Regardless, I do not believe that the intent to eliminate thin bloods in their entirety is necessarily just. 
At least, not how I interpret it for now. I say that it's a futile attempt by the old guard and status quo to cling to what they know. They're afraid. And I think that there should be more effort put into the truth of what we are. Is it from the Inquisitions, from the Camarilla, they care so much about, about what's in us. And I just, I always had questions, but I realize now that the most important part is that we can all live through the night. <laughs> what? No, no, no nothing. You're, you're absolutely correct. It's interesting. It's just funny hearing you say it. Yeah. Oh, it's just, <laughs> it is funny hearing you say it. It's just it's after it's everything. It's after just, all this time. It's, it's funny. You, I mean, you, got you had questions when you first got turned, right? Yeah, not big existential ones, but more of like, what happened? That, that I didn't have, my sire didn't stick around. I didn't know what I was. I didn't, I didn't like know anything. So I didn't have a nice gang of people to show up to be like, hey, by the way, you're a kindred. Well, I was very privileged in that regard. <laughs> Mr. Beckett. Yes. Since you're in town, is there anything that we could do to help your stay here be a little more hospitable? Well, thankfully, uh, Gary has been kind enough to through his connections, help me avoid the in inconvenient conflicts of the night. I guess I'm more curious as to what the next era here in the night of Los Angeles may be. You say they're afraid. The old god, if you will. What is it you think they're afraid of? They were afraid of the end of days, of the scripture only our version of it. Why were they afraid of you? They're afraid of me because I told other people that there was a different way to live, that we didn't have to abide by all of the hierarchies and the power struggles, that we could work together to make life better for everybody, and life better for everybody. So you would destroy the Camarilla to replace it with a union of individualistic. The free states worked for a while, didn't they? Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, I want to make it so that we don't have to worry about grabbing territory just to keep our families safe. I want to make it so that the thin bloods can live and, you know, do their thing. I guess. I have to work on that one. Yeah. Reconcile that. Yeah. I mean, they listen. I can call them off. Probably. I'll probably be throwing them back. Yeah, yes. I can do that. At least, yeah. I, no. I can text, send that text. I can text the group chat. Great. Yeah. That's a big group chat. Um. I believe I can help with some insight into what comes next. Please do enlighten me. Do you have the answers? Put a lot of thought into this in the last day or so. And you, first and foremost, are a collector of knowledge, but also a disseminator of knowledge. So as you go out into the world, might I impress upon you to communicate a message to everyone else? I am Please. at liberty to take it down and deliver it, should it be necessary, or? I'm publicly declaring to you, to you, to all of you. The Anarch Free State is back. The Camarilla has fled San Francisco. They have fled Los Angeles. They have fled San Diego. They will return at some point. I tried peaceful coexistence. It didn't work. The Cam is not welcome here. We will continue Jeremy McNeil's work. That is how it is now. Very well. There will be a number of individuals very interested to see how this plays out, myself included. I am, as always, very easy to locate. 
part of the problem. Do yeah. be careful. Where are you going next? If you must know, I'm on my way to Costa Rica. Really? What's in Costa Rica? Uh, a Methuselah has been in Torpor for about a millennia and is about to awaken if my rumors and information is correct, and I would be very eager to take down their recent memories. I, if what I hear is true, there's other people that would be very eager to take them down. Oh, I'm... That's way above my pay grade. <laughs> to fix that. Please don't. If you have a chance, I have a friend in Mexico City that I think would love to make your acquaintance. There's a good chance they're already an acquaintance. I should have known. Is there anything that we can learn from the failure of the Free States the first time? The camera will, will be back. I don't know if that was the last of the Inquisition and even the Anarchs are not the good guys. What I will say in just my brief time getting a read on this unique troop and the slow gathering of rumors that have found me in recent years. Continue to question authority whenever it comes to you. Not a problem. <laughs> it is intended by those in power to try and keep you bound by the beliefs of the past. Learn from them, but know that nothing necessarily holds to the word. Everything is written with intent the intent of those who control history. By maintaining who you are as individuals, by finding something worth believing in, just you, that scares the old guard. I haven't lived this long by adhering to those who are my betters, if you will. I'm merely here to collect, to listen, to hear your accounts in your own words, your own voices. And I'll be collecting more from other perspectives, I'm sure, as time goes on. Hmm. But, well, tonight has been any proof. It's amazing what a handful of young, chaotic shitheads can do. It's an accurate description. Not inaccurate. Yeah, okay. Shitheads? Don't just. I, I think he means it in a nice way. Not inaccurate. Okay. Nice or not, only Beckett knows for sure. His questions will no doubt continue until near sunrise. So this seems an excellent place to end our vampire story. For now. This way. Just step through here, then there's... That, there, then there it goes. This is a curious space. The labyrinth. Yeah. I've heard some interesting thoughts. I mean, I, you, I'm sure you know of Zelios. Mm-hmm. I didn't make it, he did. Uh, but I've been living here. Interesting. Living here? Well, oh. living on top, there's a little access tunnel up above that is where I live, but spending a lot of time here for good, uh, five years. All right. Would you say you have a firm grasp of how deep it goes? I've mapped a portion of it. It changes a lot, so I don't know exactly how big it is. I'd be intrigued to... Look at this map, if you're um, willing. Yeah, absolutely. I can make you a copy. Uh, I just, it's, uh, it is a convergence of the ley lines that lay under Los Angeles. That's, according to Zelios, built to protect those ley lines. Problem is, it attracts people. <laughs> they want to find out what's in here. I mean, even Gary, wants to know what's in here, and he's been trying to get in for years. Uh, Would you say you're its guardian? By default, I guess. I didn't really want to use it for anything. It was just something to do. 
Something to look at, study, figure out. Why are you showing me this? I don't know what to do with it. It's caused a lot of problems over the last couple of years. Everybody wanting it, everybody needing it, showing up in it, trapping werewolves in it, it's a lot. Um, I mean, it's that thing, when you go through it, you can only make it to the other side if you're one of us. Any living thing that goes through, goes through excruciating pain and probably dies. Hmm. But that doesn't make me feel any better because kindred are what I'm worried about. So this place has a lot of power. I'm one kindred. I guess I just wanted an outside opinion as to what I should do with it. In my perspective, places of power like this rarely ever come to good use. But, if in the right hands, who knows? Historically, they rarely do fall into the right hands. I don't know if mine are the right ones either. I don't either, to be perfectly honest. That's fair. Well, I am certainly intrigued, and I appreciate the Show and tell, if you will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I, <laughs> what I thought, but I thought you should see it. No, I appreciate that. I cannot guide you on what it is you wish to do with this, but I get this small sense you already know. <laughs> yeah, probably. What's it like when you're your age? I will say, in some ways, it gets extremely tiring. Yeah. But at the same time, if you live by the curiosity of the human mind, there's so much to know. <laughs> That's what I thought, yeah. Okay, that, thank you. Here, I'll... I'll show you how to get you that map this way. 